sisters and brothers in Christ. Through the sacrament of baptism, God's Spirit has been poured out upon water. Water poured over and immersing us, water that flows freely for all who receive it. Water from the streams of God's saving power and justice. Water that brings hope to those who thirst for righteousness. Water that refreshes life, nurtures growth and offers new birth. Today, we come to the waters to renew our commitments in each other's presence to God who has raised us, the Spirit who has birthed us, and the Creator who is making all things new. Through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's Holy Church. We are incorporated into God's mighty act of salvation. And we are given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price, through the reaffirmation of our faith. We renew the covenant declared at our baptism, acknowledge what God is doing for us, and affirm our commitment to Christ's Holy Church. On behalf of the whole Church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the Church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? I do. According to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful members of Christ's Holy Church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? I will. Let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through 
water. After the flood was set in the clouds, a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Declare Christ's works to the nations, his glory among all the people. Pour out your Holy Spirit and by this gift of water, Call to our remembrance the grace declared to us in our baptism. For you have washed away our sins and you clothe us with righteousness throughout our lives that dying and rising with Christ we may share in his final victory. All praise to you, eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Remember your baptism and be thankful. The Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water in the Spirit, you may live as faithful disciples of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So 
The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them and I will write it on their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, know the Lord, for they shall all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Saklat ni Propeta Jeremias, pangkat tatlumput isa, talatang tatlumput isa hanggang tatlumput apat. Ganito ang ating mababasa. Sinabi ni Yahweh, darating ang panahon na gagawa ako ng bagong tipan sa Israel at sa Huda. Ito'y hindi tulad ng kasundo ang ginawa ko sa kanilang mga ninuno nang ilabas ko sila sa Egypto. Bagamat para akong isang asawa sa kanila, sinira nila ang kasunduan ito. Ganito ang gagawin kong kasunduan sa bayan ng Israel pagdating ng panahon. Itatanim ko sa kanilang kalooban ang aking kautusan. Isusulat ko ito sa kanilang mga puso. Ako ang kanilang magiging Diyos at silang aking magiging bayan. Hindi na sila kailangang turuan ang isa't isa at sabihing kilalanin mo si Yahweh sa pagkatakoy makikilala nilang lahat mula sa pinakaaba hanggang sa pinakadakila sapagkat patatawarin ko sila sa kanilang kasalanan at kalilimutan ko na ang kanilang kasamaan. Amen. Yeremia 31장 31절에서 34절의 말씀입니다. 그때가 오면 내가 이스라엘 가문과 유대 가문과 새 언약을 세우겠다. 나 주의 말이다. 이것은 내가 그들의 조상의 손을 붙잡고 이집트 땅에서 데리고 나오던 때에 세운 언약과는 다른 것이다. 내가 그들의 남편이 되었어도 그들은 나의 언약을 깨뜨려 버렸다. 나 주의 말이다 그러나 그 시절이 지난 뒤에 내가 이스라엘 가문과 언약을 세울 것이니 나는 나의 율법을 그들의 가슴 속에 넣어주며 그들의 마음판에 새겨 기록하여 나는 그들의 하나님이 되고 그들은 나의 백성이 될 것이다 그때에는 이웃이나 동포끼리 서로 너는 주를 알아라 하지 않을 것이니 이것은 작은 사람부터 큰 사람에 이르기까지 그들이 모든 나를 알 것이기 때문이다. 내가 그들의 허물을 용서하고 그들의 죄를 다시는 기억하지 않겠다. 나의 주의 말이다. 디어 유나이티드 메토디스트 브라더스 앤 시스터스 아라운드 더 월드 아이 브링 유 그리딩스 from the North Katanga, Tanganyika, and Tanzania Episcopal area. And I am so excited to share with you some few reflections on a very interesting team elevating the new covenant. As we remember our baptism and renew our covenant with God in Christ, getting into the Christmas season, I would like to reflect with you on the Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31 to 34 biblical text. There is a consensus among Old Testament scholars that the book of Jeremiah underwent a process, deuteronomistic reduction, which is confirmed by the number of cross references between the book of Jeremiah and the Deuteronomy history. The writer of Deuteronomy elevated the importance and normativity of the law 
in the Persian era, to the extent of relegating prophecy to an insignificant status. Whereas the Deuteronomy attempted to influence the book of Jeremiah, this book also highlights the prophetic themes of inclusion, forgiveness, reconciliation, restoration, equality, and covenantal relationships. If I were to be contextual, I would submit to you that these themes of inclusion, forgiveness, reconciliation, restoration, equality, and covenantal relationship, they are very much embedded among most Africans' ethnic and tribal groups' values. And they are expressed through proverbs, idioms, and sayings. Such elements were aimed at ensuring peace, unity, and love in a given community. The same applies among communities outside Africa and the world. It should be also be noted that in this Jeremiah text, there seems to be a debate or a conversation between the law on one side and the prophecy on the other side. And this debate is occurring in post-Azilic Israel, perhaps in the late Persian period. Through Moses and the law, the old covenant was established, a covenant written in stone, requiring people to love God with their heart, soul, mind, and strength and to love their neighbors as themselves. After centuries of disobedience, the prophet Jeremiah emerges as somebody who came with the notion of the new covenant through God, who expects us to mature in our faith, and through this covenant, the notion of forgiveness of sins emerges as a sign of restoration. This new covenant is written on the minds and heart of all people. But who knows what is on someone else's heart? Brothers and sisters, the new covenant was sealed with the blood of Jesus Christ. The new covenant written on our hearts and established by the blood of Jesus Christ reminds us that we are forgiven though we have failed to keep the law. Oh yes, we may all have failed to live by the book of discipline of our United Methodist Church. Then let us all join the new covenant and be open to God writing on our hearts the words of forgiveness, inclusion, equality, peace, unity, reconciliation, love, justice, and covenantal relationships regardless of our differences. Most importantly, I invite you to be open to God's prophecy in order to be the church he wants us to be. A prophetic church engaged in God's mission. Amen. As part of our witness to God's grace in the world, we are called to care for our neighbor and protect the vulnerable in our midst. In the past two years, we have been especially called to this holy work throughout the COVID-19 pandemic that has deeply altered our world, taken millions of lives and threatened millions more. The Council of Bishops has joined the Connectional Table and the agencies of the church in bringing special focus to the issue of global COVID vaccine equity by declaring this a missional priority of the church. Our hope is to provide advocacy and education and to speak with a united voice about the importance of making vaccines available to people all over the world, not just in the countries that can afford them. Already, United Methodists have been caring for people in vital and innovative ways amidst this deadly pandemic. To be a part of this vital work, please donate to the UMCOR COVID-19 Response Fund. It's advance number 3022612. It's also on your screen. Or look for opportunities with your annual conference to advocate and educate about global vaccine equity. Together, we can bring our witness of God's love and care to bear on the tragedy of the COVID-19 pandemic.
brothers and sisters in Christ, the Christian life is redeemed from sin and consecrated to God. Through baptism, we have entered this life and have been admitted into the new covenant of which Jesus Christ is the mediator. He sealed it with his own blood that it might last forever. On the one side, God promises to give us new life in Christ, the source and perfecter of our faith. On the other side, we are pledged to live no more for ourselves, but only for Jesus Christ, who loved us and gave himself for us. From time to time, we renew our covenant with God, especially when we reaffirm the baptismal covenant and gather at the Lord's table. Today, we meet as the generations before us have met to renew the covenant that binds us to God. Let us make this covenant of God our own. Commit yourselves to Christ as his servants. Give yourselves to him that you may belong to him. Christ has many services to be done. Some are more easy and honorable. Others are more difficult and disgraceful. Some are suitable to our inclination and interest. Others are contrary to both. In some ways, we may please Christ and please ourselves. But then there are other works where we cannot please Christ except by denying ourselves. It is necessary, therefore, that we consider what it means to be a servant of Christ. Let us, therefore, go to Christ and pray. Let me be your servant under your command. I will no longer be my own. I will give up myself to your will in all things. Be satisfied that Christ shall give you your place and work. Lord, make me what you will. I put myself fully into your hands. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be employed for you or laid aside for you. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. I freely and with a willing heart give it all to your pleasure and disposal. Christ will be the Savior of none but his servants. He is the source of all salvation to those who obey. Christ will have no servants except by consent. Christ will not accept anything except full consent to all that he requires. Christ will be all in all or he will be nothing. Confirm this by a holy covenant. To make this covenant a reality in your life, listen to these admonitions. First, set apart some time more than once, to be spent alone before the Lord in seeking earnestly God's special assistance and gracious acceptance of you, in carefully thinking through all the conditions of the covenant, in searching your hearts, whether you have already freely given your life to Christ. Consider what your sins are. Consider the laws of Christ, how holy, strict, and spiritual they are, and whether you, after having carefully considered them, are willing to choose them all. Be sure you're clear in these matters. See that you do not lie to God. Second, be serious and in a spirit of holy awe and reverence. Third, claim God's covenant. Rely upon God's promise of giving grace and strength so you can keep your promise. Trust not your own strength and power. Fourth, resolve to be faithful. You have given to the Lord your hearts. 
You have opened your mouth to the Lord and you have dedicated yourself to God. With God's power, never go back. And last, be then prepared to renew your covenant with the Lord. Fall down on your knees, lift your hands toward heaven and open your hearts to the Lord as we pray. O oh, righteous God, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, see me as I fall down before you. Forgive my unfaithfulness in not having done your will, for you have promised mercy to me if I turn to you with my whole heart. God requires that you shall put away all your idols. I here from the bottom of my heart renounce them all, covenanting with you that no known sin shall be allowed in my life. Against your will, I have turned my love toward the world. In your power, I will watch all the temptations that will lead me away from you. For my own righteousness is riddled with sin, unable to stand before you. Through Christ, God has offered to be your God again, if you would let him. Before all heaven and earth, I here acknowledge you as my Lord and God. I take you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, for my portion, and vow to give up myself, body and soul, as your servant, to serve you in holiness and righteousness all the days of my life. God has given the Lord Jesus Christ as the only way and means of coming to God. Jesus, I do here on bended knees accept Christ as the only new and living way and sincerely join myself in a covenant with him. O blessed Jesus, I come to you hungry, sinful, miserable, blind, and naked. Unworthy even to wash the feet of your servants. I do here with all my power accept you as my Lord and head. I renounce my own worthiness and vow that you are the Lord, my righteousness. I renounce my own wisdom and take you for my only guide. I renounce my own will and take your will as my law. Christ has told you that you must suffer with him. I do here covenant with you, O Christ, to take my lot with you as it may fall. Through your grace I promise that neither life nor death shall shut part me from you. God has given holy laws as the rule of your life. I do here willingly put my neck under your yoke to carry your burden. All your laws are holy, just, and good. I therefore take them as the rule for my words, thoughts, and actions, promising that I will strive to order my whole life according to your direction and not allow myself to neglect anything I know to be my duty. The Almighty God searches and knows your heart. O oh God, you know that I make this covenant with you today without guile or reservation. If any falsehood should be in it, guide me and help me to say it right. And now, glory be to you, O oh God the Father, whom I, from this day forward, shall look upon as my God and Father. Glory be to you, O God the Son, who have loved me and washed me from my sins in your own blood, and now is my Savior and Redeemer. Glory be to you, O God the Holy Spirit, who by your almighty power have turned my heart from sin to God. O mighty God, the Lord omnipotent, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you have now become my covenant friend, and I, through your infinite grace, have become your covenant servant. So be it. 
and let the covenant I have made on earth be ratified in heaven. Amen. You are advised to make this covenant not only in your hearts, but in word. Not only in word, but in writing. Therefore, with all reverence, lay the service before the Lord as you act and deed. And when you have done this, sign it. Then keep it as the reminder of the holy agreement between God and you, that you may remember it during doubts and temptations. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to, to give our thanks, thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth. Before the mountains were brought forth, O oh, you had formed the earth from everlasting to everlasting. You alone are God. You created light out of darkness and brought forth life on earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ in whom you have revealed yourself, our light and our salvation. In baptism and in a table fellowship, he took his place with sinners. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim the release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you will save your people. By the baptism and in his suffering and death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup and he gave thanks to you. And he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of this mighty act in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery. Of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. 
through your Son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit in your Holy Church. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now let us pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. While those of us who are gathered in person will be partaking in communion together, we invite those of you at home to witness the sacrament and reflect on this holy mystery. This is the body of Christ, broken for you. And this is the blood of Christ, poured out for you. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Wapendo katika Kristu, enendeni na salama ya Bwana. Aksanti kwa Bwana. Amen. Go i Kristi fred. Vayan en la paz de Kristo. Humayo kayo, taglay ang kapayapaan ni Kristo. Kristo'y pionharil gajigo, sege sokuro, nahagashipshio. Go in the peace of Christ.